Hello everybody, I am John Combs and I'm going to go over insulators, conductors, and charges and how they all influence each other so that you can better understand this when it comes to physics. So I wanted to go over in electrostatics, we have decided there are two types of charges. We have a positive charge and a negative charge and they will interact with each other in different ways. If we have two positively charged molecules come together, they will repel. And it's the same thing as if we have two negative charges come together, they will repel as well. But when we bring a positive and a negative charge together, they will attract. Uh, there are a few examples that, I, that you've seen in your daily life to demonstrate this. For example, when you rub your head with a balloon and take it away, your hair is all sticking straight up and it's repelling each other. That's because they all have the same charge. This balloon is now able to stick to the wall and the roof because it has a negative charge and it's sticking to something that has the opposite charge to it. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to go over was what is the difference between a conductor and insulators? So really the difference between them is the ability of to allow electrons to flow through the material. So every material that you've seen so far can, can be considered as either a conductor or an insulator. As we refer to this picture, we can see that this electron right here, in this conductor, is able for the most part to freely flow and get to the other side. In, in the insulator, you can see that this electron really can't get through so examples of a good conductor are metals such as copper, silver, and gold. Examples of good insulators are things like wool, glass, and rubber. You have seen examples of this in your daily life. For example, when you look at a, a wire used to wire a house, you've noticed that it's covered in rubber. The rubber is on the outside to stop the electric flow of the electron so that you can keep your house from not burning down. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I wanted to go over was how to put a charge on something that is considered an insulator. If you remember talking about earlier about insulators, it is hard for electrons to flow through insulators. So because of this, we have to put energy into our materials so that they can exchange electrons and exchange charges. So I wanted to give you another example going back to the balloon example. For this charge to be able to repel their hair, her hair, you need to be able to rub the balloon on their head, which is the energy that you were putting in. If I would have just touched the balloon to the head and pulled it away, there would have been no exchange of electrons. But since I have to put in the energy of actively rubbing, it's gonna actually allow that those electrons to flow from one object to the other causing, as you can see here, their hair to repel because they all have the same positive charge. And then the balloon will have the excess negative charge. The next thing I wanted to go over is how do we charge a conductor? So the first thing you need to know is that to charge a conductor, it only takes, we only have to touch the object. This is because, if we refer back to this picture, that electrons are able to flow freely through a conductor. So in this case, we do not need to add energy like we did with the insulator example. So for this example, I have a charged rod that is negatively charged. As I touch this conductor, we can see that it puts a negative charge. And since it, has, and since it is a conductor, this negative charge will eventually spread throughout the whole entire conductor because electrons are able to flow freely through conductors. Through this, in the, through this conductor. There is also another way that you can charge conductors, and it is through something called induction. To be able to do this, you need to start with two conductors that are both neutral and they are touching each other. The next step that you would do is you would bring in a positively charged a rod near to this conductor. Since our positive and our negatives attract, and you have to remember that since electrons flow freely in conductors, these electrons are able to flow all the way to this side and give this side a more negative charge. At the same time, 
Once that has happened, it has put a positive charge on the other side. And then you are able to separate them. And as you can see, this one on the left has a higher negative charge, and this one on the right has a positive charge. And this is just one example of how induction can be created.